Colonel Adamson Mbewe from uh, Zambia Air Force. I'm uh, a fighter pilot by branch. Uh, currently, I'm the Vice Chief of Training. Uh, in this uh, uh, conference, I'm the uh, Zambia Air Force uh, liaison officer, uh, more or less like uh, a point of contact uh, for the association on behalf of the Zambia Air Force. The Association of uh, African Air Forces is uh, a congregation of uh, the Air Forces of uh, Africa. Uh, this is an association, a voluntary, non-political uh, organization uh, that uh, has come to bring uh, Air Forces for the f very first time uh, in our history uh, to come and uh, uh, collaborate, exchange experiences, uh, and share best experiences uh, together, especially in our continent. Uh, that's what this association is all about. Zambia Air Force, this is our third participation. Uh, as you are aware that uh, the Triple AF, it's, a, it's, a, it's an association that meets twice in a year. There's a lower organ, which is the one which is meeting right now, and uh, a supreme organ during uh, the one that meets when the air chiefs congregate, the one that is called the symposium. So as Zambia Air Force, this is our third, uh, our fourth participation. Uh, the first participation was uh, in 2018 when we signed the charter in Marrakesh in Morocco. Then the second time was the time when we met as liaison officers. That was my first assignment when I was uh, appointed as Zambia Air Force liaison officer in, uh, in uh, Dakar, Senegal. Then uh, follow, the following year, which was last year, the, uh, the, the, the air chiefs met in in Kenya and uh, for the first time uh, Zambia Air Force was invited uh, to co-host with uh, United States uh, Air Forces based in, uh, in Germany to host and uh, it is an honor to do that this year. The a liaison officer is basically the, 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 the point of contact person for the association uh, with the respective Air Force. Uh, he is the person who uh, coordinates the activities of uh, the association with uh, the Air Force or indeed the Air Chief is uh, basically the point of contact person and uh, is part and parcel of the working group that uh, is mandated to do a lot of work on behalf of the Air Chief so that at the time when they meet at the symposium all the work that uh, the, uh, the liaison officer in conjunction with other liaison officers of the other countries would have worked out and then they present as a team uh, but it's a product that comes from the liaison officers to the air chiefs for ratification or indeed further guidance. The working group is very, very important because the working group is the one that uh, uh, is given a lot of uh, uh, taskings from the air chief symposium uh, to be worked on or indeed finalized. So they, we do receive tasks from the symposium uh, where we, maybe proposals are made to the air chiefs then they, they, they would be able to give directives either to uh, uh, make some adjustments before the final product is given to the air chiefs. Further, for whatever the, the, the association will be able to achieve, the working team is the working group. So that's where much work for the association is done and then presented for ratification or indeed guidance to the symposium, at the symposium when the air chiefs meet because they are the ones who yield the, the desired uh, 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 authority and guidance with regard to where the, 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 the association is supposed to go. So it's basically the, the working team for the association on behalf of the various air forces who are voluntary members of the AAAF. The most important thing uh, for one to come in as an LNO, uh, the starting point perhaps is the respective country where one is coming from. Uh, uh, this has got to be a person who is uh, uh, well experienced in terms of understanding uh, uh, both his Air Force and the, the aviation in general outside. And uh, most importantly, this should be a person who has a direct contact or indeed who yields some contact from his air chief because at the time when he's appointed to be the, the liaison officer, he is mandated to speak on behalf of his air chiefs during the, 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 the working group. So therefore, he has to have a direct uh, contact so that what he's not able to 
uh, to articulate, he's able to get guidance from his air chief. And where it's not clear, even during the working group, he can still get back either through a phone call or whichever other means to get guidance from the air chief. So that what he speaks, he speaks on behalf of the air chief. So he should be one who is well experienced, one who is able to uh, articulate issues well on behalf of his air chief. The benefit of uh, uh, working with uh, uh, other countries, obviously, uh, no man is an island. Uh, as, a, as an Air Force, obviously, we would want to learn other, other things that we don't know, other uh, best practices, experiences, because we are geographically located in different areas. And uh, obviously, our experiences, especially with uh, 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 safe flying, they, they are totally different. So certain best experiences can be exchanged for the benefit of perhaps Zambia Air Force. So it is very important to establish this collaboration between our uh, between the Air Forces within Africa and indeed uh, the US. It always works better in terms of improving on the way we do uh, certain things. Obviously, even for us to bring to the fore our own experiences as the Zambia Air Force, having been in existence from 1963 to date, obviously we have a wealth of experience that we would always want to share. But where would we share if we don't have such a platform? So this is a beautiful platform that we can be able to share that and also learn from others too.